let me begin by introducing my wife. Her name is Kimberly Joyce Griffin Williams. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> my name is James Stewart Williams. I was born in this neighborhood at 3015 Linway. Um, actually born at Parkland Hospital, but this is where I resided and grew up until I turned 17 and I went to college. Um, it was a nice neighborhood. It was, everybody knew everybody. Everybody got along, very neighborly. And everybody owned their home. Nobody rented anything around here. We owned these houses. The thing about this neighborhood is that the people who lived here, there was a lot of pride in this neighborhood. There were a lot of people that were working class individuals and they may have been garbage men, they may have been valets, they may have been butlers, they may have been, you know, just janitors, but you never knew it because they were professionally dressed, they spoke the king's English, and they were very, very kind. I mean, the men would get off work and come home and sit on the porch and they may smoke a cigar or whatever. They may have them a little drink and they water the yard and so forth. And I mean, it, it was something that I was accustomed to. You know, it was, it was, it was the sixties. But you gotta realize I came in on the cut. I was kinda young for the kids around here because there were no kids my age. Everybody was like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years older than me. So that's why so many people that are maybe 10 years older than me, I'm, I'm real sociable with them. Now the youngsters, they think, they think I'm older than what I am, but you know, I'm not that old. You know what, I, and I hate to, I hate to say this because I, I hate it when I hear it, but they say I'm so smart. But you know, my grandmother taught me that when you go around and think you're smart, you're the dumbest person in the room. You're the dumbest person in the room. I was an honor student at Bishop Lynch. I was a presidential scholar at Bishop College. I graduated magna cum laude. And um, I have a, a master's degree. But I don't want my educational accomplishments to define my character because I'm much deeper than that. There are a lot of things that I like. Um, when I was in school, I really didn't care about the academic part because that was easy. I wanted to be a football player. And I was a little guy, but I played four years of college ball. I got a chance to go to the NFL. I got cut, I came back home, went back to school, got a master's and I started teaching. Left that and went into landscaping. And what I found about landscaping is it's something that my grandmother taught me when I was little. Um, the flowers don't talk back. They do what you want them to do. And if you're kind to them, they'll be kind to you. Uh, Pearl Bailey, Louis Armstrong came to Dallas. And my grandfather loved Louis Armstrong. And my grandmother loved Pearl Bailey. But we went and saw Porgy and Bess, the original production. And it threw me. I'm a little boy. I'm looking at this because they would travel at that time, you know, and they had certain venues that they would, would, would go to. But I learned about these people because my grandmother would explain it to me. I heard so much about the fair. And when I was little, even up until probably about the second grade, my mama would always take me to the fair. And I hated that. She want to hold my hand and all that. Mama, I, you don't need them. No, you'll get lost in this crowd. You know, it was a lot of people. But I guess my best remembrance, when I got to the second grade, no, I was in first grade, my grandmother took me to the fair. And she was probably 71, 72 at the time. And she had started having arthritis or whatever. 
and it was my grandmother and her baby sister, and we went to the fair. And we walked from one end to the other. And man, these ladies were so tired. They say, I don't want to walk no more. Get, see if that boy let us ride on that cart or whatever, you know. But I said, no, we can ride. They, had, they used to have the skyboxes. And we got on the skybox. Well, you got to realize my grandmother and, and, and my, my, my aunt had never been on an airplane. So for them to get on that skybox, they were scared to death. And they kept telling me, boy, sit down, sit down. I said, look, look, you know. I said, I think I can see our house. I was just saying stuff. But that, that you know, and I mean, anything I wanted, they bought me. But I know I couldn't go, go to school, well, no. Yeah, because we went on a Monday, because it was a private school. I couldn't go to school the next day because I had a stomachache from eating all that junk. <laughs> uh, uh, colored, colored Folks Day, that's what they called it. And my grandmother and them would be dressed all in their sundresses, and they would go out there. My grandfather, he'd be dressed up, you know, casual. And they would go to the fair and, and do things. But it would take my uncle to tell you, I went to the fair every day because he did. Oh, man. You know, my uncle played football for Bishop College as well in the 60s. And... Bishop would have homecoming in the Cotton Bowl. So he came by one Saturday evening, and I knew that there was going to be a football game in the Cotton Bowl, but my thoughts of even going to the game were, were, were non-existent. So he said, boy, you want to go to the football game? I said, yeah, because I had been to high school games, but I had never been to a game in the Cotton Bowl. So in 1963, he takes me to see Bishop College and Wiley College play homecoming in the Cotton Bowl. At that time, the Cotton Bowl was a grass field, and they had wood bleachers all the way around. From then, my greatest remembrance was 1965, around Thanksgiving. It's cold. My uncle said, I'm taking you to the Cowboy game today. I said, okay. Well, I had already been a couple of times with him, but it was hot, and we sitting in the end zone with the little dollar tickets. He said, told my mother, Bobby, put a suit on him. I said, I'm going to wear a suit to a football game. He said, put a suit on. So when I get in the car, I said, how come we wearing a suit because it's cold? He said, no, nah, because Jim Brown is coming to town. I said, what? I said, who is Jim Brown? He said, the best football player ever lived. I said, what? So when we get out, we, we get in the car, we leave Oak Cliff because we were over at my aunt's house. We go to North Dallas. I said, the Cotton Bowl is that way. Why are we going this way? He said, we riding the transit bus to the Cotton Bowl, chartered bus. So when we get there, my uncle had bought a house in Elm Thicket off of Mockingbird from a man named Vic Clace. He had Vic Seafood. They would have the chartered bus there. So we get on the bus, and I'm holding my uncle's hand. I get on, and it ain't number white people on this bus. I say, James, James. He said, what is it? I said, come here, loud to tell you something. He said, they ain't going to kill us, are they? <laughs> I'm scared to death. And these white women, they sitting there, oh, he's so cute, and they just hugging me, and I'm, I'm trembling. He said, you want a Coke? I said, yeah, I knew that. They gave me a Coke. My uncle got back there with the guys, and next thing I knew, my uncle was kind of lit. I said, yeah, they're going to get him drunk, and they're going to kidnap me. I'm thinking all kind of stuff. So we get to the game. I look at our tickets, and our tickets are this big. I'm like... That ain't the tickets for the end zone. He said, nah, we got reserved seats. We sit on about the 50, close to the 50 yard line. And man, we sat behind the Cleveland Browns bench. But all of the Dallas fans were over there and they were booing and everything. 
And man, every time Jim would touch that ball, he'd pick up 10, 15, 20 yards, touchdown. I mean, they, they put 50 points on Dallas. And every time he'd run, my uncle would jump up and cheer. And he tried to jump up one time and I held him down. I said, they gonna hurt us, they gonna beat us up if you do that again. Cause they be looking at him, you know, and I could see the malice in their faces. But that was my earliest and first remembrance of that. So I made a decision then, I'm not coming to the Cotton Bowl with my uncle again. <laughs> and if I come to the Cotton Bowl, I'm coming by myself and I'm gonna make sure that I'm in a spot where I can get away. So my buddies and I that played football, we started going early and we would sneak in. I ain't never paid to go in the Cotton Bowl. I, <laughs> we, we'd hold the fence up and roll under the fence and get in there. Future shock, future shock, culture shock. I mean, third world country, that's what it's like. Third world country, yeah it is. Because we can be sitting here and you see the gentleman in the car, or you might look up and see a girl walking naked down the street cause she's on drugs. I mean, it's, you didn't see that back when I was a kid. You didn't have to cover the kid's eyes. But now, nothing surprises me. I would like to see more minority home ownership and appreciation for what we have and what we established. And not we per se, but blacks as a whole, what we established. What makes me proud to be from South Dallas, it's my roots, it's my upbringing. It's where my morals, principles, values, and integrity was formulated and instilled. 